Jenna? Well, it's an attack on planet Earth from outer space, John. The sun erupting in a massive solar flare, blasting tons of plasma directly at us on Earth. Scientists are warning this solar tsunami could cause all sorts of problems. Dean Pesnell is a project scientist at the Solar Dynamics Observatory. He's, he's going to walk us through some of this. So, Dean, what exactly is happening with these solar eruptions? Well, right now we're in what we call solar minimum, where we see very few sunspots. But at the same time, we're seeing a lot of little flares and some really pretty prominence eruptions or where these dark regions of the sun just seem to erupt off the surface of the sun. So we have bright light from the flare and we get particles from these eruptions of the prominences. On Sunday, we saw a whole bunch of everything. We saw several flares and we saw one enormous prominence eruption and then that was followed by a somewhat smaller prominence eruption. Yeah, we're seeing some of the animation on the screen which is really amazing to see some of that plasma come from the sun. It looks like it goes into the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, walk us through some of the effects that could happen when this plasma comes into our own atmosphere. Well, the, the plasma leaves the sun. And it, it takes a couple of days to get here for a normal, uh, what we call a coronal mass ejection, which is what happens when it leaves the sun. And when it gets here, it flows around on the Earth's magnetic field. It has several, um, it, it has few positive effects. It has several negative effects. Okay, so walk, one us, is, yeah, walk us through a few of those. Okay, the, the first one is it can hit satellites that are in orbit around the Earth, especially the ones that are out in geostationary so orbit. So what exactly do those satellites control? Is it like television satellites for your cellular phone? What do they, what do, they do? The satellites in geostationary orbit are, are more uh, communications oriented because they, they sit over a spot on the Earth. So you can point a, a, an antenna up at it, get your cable TV, um, and get your, your radio and other kinds of communication. And when the plasma hits those, it can cause them to lose their... Um, ability to navigate, it can cause them to lose parts on the spacecraft. Uh, a couple months ago, the Galaxy 15 satellite was um, attempt, uh, apparently disabled by an earlier solar uh, event. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen during our interview because that could uh, seriously <laughs> interrupt us. What about any That's health great. concerns? Uh, the, the astronauts in, the, in, in orbit can be uh, affected by the radiation. Uh, that's monitored by NASA, and we have a group in Houston that uh, keeps track of what's going on with the astronauts. The, the other effect that we really see is the ability to navigate and communicate over the poles of the Earth. Uh, we've recently started flying a lot of airplane flights over the poles. Mm -hmm. Instead of flying them uh, through Alaska, we fly, actually fly over the North Pole. It's a very nice flight, and it takes less time because you don't fly against the jet stream. If the, one of these solar storms is severe enough, it can prevent people from flying over the poles because they, it causes communication outages. And they can't, therefore, they have to fly where they can still maintain ground contact. Sure, we also don't want that. Real quick here, global warming. I mean, is this direct global warming when you get plasma from the sun uh, bursting into our Earth's atmosphere? This is not, as far as we know, a direct cause of global warming. We do see these effects come and go with the solar cycle. Uh, we're currently starting up the, towards solar maximum, so we'll see more and more of these storms as we move towards solar maximum since about 2014. And then we'll, 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 they'll taper off again. So if there is an effect, it comes and goes with the solar cycle. All right, Dean, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. We really appreciate uh, your information on that, something we probably didn't think a lot about, uh, Dean Pesnell again. Uh, also, it, you guys can actually see this if you're in the northern hemisphere. Sometimes you can see red or green curtains of light uh, if you're north enough, like in Alaska, for example. So you might want to check that out. You might see something tonight. Uh, you can also check out some of these astonishing new pictures if you're not uh, that far north. They're from NASA at foxnews.com. It's the sun as you've never seen it before. It's really remarkable photographs, so uh, definitely check that out. And some really